classic Craftsman drill press started with the 100 series that ran from 1946 to 1957. It was replaced by the Craftsman 150 series that ran from 1958 to 1964. And although these two drill presses look very similar, there are some differences. And we're going to be talking about internal parts and how they interact in this video. I wanted to quickly say thank you to my friend and mentor, Frank Lee, who provided most of the cutaway images that we're going to be using in this video. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, check out my channel. The first thing we're going to look at is a cross section of the 100 series head casting. In this picture, you can see the spindle pulley assembly, the quill spindle assembly, the pinion, and the quill lock. Some head castings may actually have an additional support bore located here. In this picture you can see how the pinion teeth engage with the rack on the quill. Rotating the pinion will translate to the quill moving up and down vertically. The top five inches of the spindle are splined and they engage with splines that are on the inside of the spindle pulley assembly. These splines are long enough to ensure that mechanical power is being transferred from the spindle pulley assembly to the spindle regardless of its vertical position. This allows the drill press to continuously rotate the chuck and drill as you raise or lower the quill. Now that we understand how these parts operate, let's look at how they're mounted inside the head casting. In this picture, you can see the spindle pulley assembly is mounted inside the head casting. Notice that there are two number 6205 ball bearings on the spindle pulley assembly. Each of these ball bearings ride inside a bore inside the head casting. With the spindle pulley assembly removed, you can see an outer snap ring that rides inside the bottom bore of these two bores. This outer snap ring acts as a rest for the bottom bearing on the spindle pulley assembly. The entire spindle pulley assembly rests on this snap ring and if it's not present, the spindle pulley assembly will sit too low in the head casting. In this picture, you can see the spindle pulley assembly inside the head casting and notice that there are two machine screws that are coming in from the sides of the head casting. These two machine screws ride on the outer race of the bottom bearing and prevent it from traveling up. The combination of these machine screws and the outer snap ring fix the bottom bearing in the head casting. This is the 1952 King Silly patent for the head casting and spindle pulley assembly. You can see both the ball bearings and how the two machine screws engage the outer race of the bottom ball bearing. One of the most significant changes between the 100 and the 150 series drill presses is the addition of a retaining ring on the quill. This is a side-by-side -side view of the quill spindle assembly from a 100 drill press on the right and a 150 drill press on the left. Notice the retaining ring on the 150 quill. This is a significant change because it prevents the feedstock bracket from slipping and allowing the quill spindle assembly from traveling too high inside the head casting. Here we are again with the cutaway view of the 100 head. Again, you can see the spindle pulley assembly and the quill spindle assembly. Examining the quill spindle assembly, we can see the spindle taper, the thrust collar, a cutaway of the feedstop bracket, the quill gasket, and the quill. There is a metal washer or spacer that cannot be seen in this picture. Then there's a rubber washer and the spindle collar. Lastly, we can make out the spindle. In this picture, the quill is in the uppermost position. 
Notice the gap between the top of the spindle collar and the bottom of the spindle pulley assembly. On a 100 drill press, the only thing that holds the feedstock bracket in place on the quill is a one and a half inch hex head cap screw. Even if the feed return spring is set properly, the repeated bumping of the feedstock bracket on the bottom of the head casting will eventually cause the feedstock bracket to start slipping down the quill over time. In this picture, the quill is fully seated in the feedstock bracket. However, in this picture, the feedstock bracket has slipped down the quill, simulating what can happen over time. Although this is exaggerated, the slipping of the feedstock bracket translates to other issues inside the head casting. Notice the gap between the top of the spindle collar and the bottom of the spindle pulley assembly is no longer present. More importantly, notice that the bottom bearing in the spindle pulley assembly is no longer resting on the outer snap ring. In this picture, the bottom bearing is almost completely out of its bore that it's supposed to ride in. Now remember that there should be two machine screws that prevent the bearing from traveling up. This over travel of the quill spindle assembly will either bend or break off those two machine screws. This is a common problem that we see when we acquire drill presses and have trouble getting out those machine screws and it's completely avoidable by ensuring that the quill is fully seated inside that feedstock bracket. Depending on how often you use your drill press, if it's a 100 series, just every once in a while, verify that that feedstock bracket has a fully seated quill inside it. Well, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, I appreciate the support and I will see you next time.